Hello student, today we start the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. It is a very well known resu result or the statement that every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes. And this product or the factors of prime numbers are unique. Their order may be changed. Let us understand this statement with an example. 12 is a composite number. We take 12 as a, a composite number. If we write their factors, so factors of 12 are prime factors, first factor is 2, again 2 and 3. These are the prime factors of 2, uh, 12. Now 2 is a prime number, again 2 and 3. So this composite number can be expressed as a product of prime numbers. Their order may be changed. Sometimes if you write 3 into 2 into 2, also same, or you may write 3 in, into or 2 into 3 into 2. So ultimate we get 3 numbers, 2, 2 and 3. So order may be changed. So this is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. That is, the every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes. The use of this, we find the LCM of the numbers by getting the prime factors. What is the method to find the prime factors of a composite number? Let us see for the same example. How we find this? Because this is a very small number, we can orally find its prime factors. But what is the method? The method is, we write, all of you done in earlier classes also, 12. So what is the first prime number, the smallest prime number, which divides 12? So clearly it is 2. 2, 6 is 12. Again, 6 is divisible by 2, so again we divide 6 by 2, 3 times, and then 3 divided by 3, that is 1. So in this way we get the prime factors of any number, which is composite. So in the next part we will discuss the LCM and HCM. You all of know what is LCM? LCM of the num LCM is, it is the short, short form, lowest, common multiple and HCF yesterday we have discussed it highest common factor in to find the HCF by prime factorization we take all the common factors of the lowest power which we discuss in the later part LCM we find the prime factors of the given numbers and then we write the highest power of the factors and their product becomes the LCM of the given numbers lowest common multiple clear? Now there is a relation between the LCM, HCF and the numbers. If there are two numbers, if A and B are the two numbers or positive integers, so LCM of A comma B, this is the, the meaning of this is LCM of a and b into HCF of a and b is equal to the product of numbers product of the numbers of the numbers that is a into b so if there are two numbers LCM and let's see if their product will be same as the product of the numbers. 
the use of this relation is if LCM and HCF is given, we can get the product of the numbers. If LCM is given and the numbers are given, we can get their HCF and vice versa. If HCF and the numbers are given, we can get their LCM. Clear? So now the next part, we take some exercise questions to find uh, the LCM HCF of the given number. Now, the previous concept, we take some example by uh, exercise 1.2. The second question, find the HCF and LCM of the following pairs of the integers and verify the result LCM into HCF equals to product of the integers. Now, we, the second part, second question is 510 and 92. These are the two integers. So first, what we do? We find the prime factors of these numbers. So how we find the uh, prime factors of these numbers? By division method. You can write 510 and find the prime factors. It is divisible by 2. 2 twos are 4. 2 fives are 10. 2 fives are 10. Now, 255 is divisible by the next prime number that is 3. So divided by 3, 3 8s are and 3 5s are 15. Again, it is divisible by, is it divisible by 3? No. So it is divisible, divisible by 5, 5 1s are 5, 3, 5 7s are and then 17 is a prime number, so it is divisible by 17. So in this way we get the prime factors of 510. Similarly, you can get the prime factors of 92. So the method is same. Again, it is divisible by 2. 2 4s are 8. And then 1, 2 6s are 12. Again by 2. 2 2s are 4. 2 3s are 6. 23 is a prime number. So 20, it, it will be divisible by 23. So these are the prime factors of 510 and 92. So we write them. 510 can be written as 2 into 3 into 5 into 17 into 1. And then the factors of 92 are 2 into 2 into 23 into 1. So we write the prime factors of these numbers. Now we find the HCF. HCF of these numbers are highest common factor. These are the factors. So which are the common factors? Clearly this pair only 2 is common. So 2 and I think you Think about 1, so 2 into 1, that is 2. 2 is the HCF of these numbers. Again, 2 is a common, first fact, first prime 2, which is common to both, but here 2 not, 3 is not there, 3 is here, 3 is not here. So no other factor are common. So HCF is 2. Now, to find the LCM, we write the common fact, highest common factor, uh, the power of factor which is highest. Here 2, the power is 1, but in second, 2 raised to the power 2. So, 2 into 2. So, this comes within that. Then 3, then 5 because they are correct ones, then 17, and then 23, and then 1. So, the product will be the LCM of these numbers. And now multiply this. Uh, 2 to the 4, 4 to the 12, 12 to the 60, 60 into 17 into 23. So now the product is 0 
into 23. Now we multiply this 1020 with 23, it becomes 23,460. So this is the LCM of number. Now we have to verify. Now you can verify. Now LCM into HCF. This is 23,460 multiplied by 2. So the product is 0, 9, 6, 46,920. Now the product, product of the integers will be 510 multiplied by 92. The product also 46,920. So hence it is very fine. Now we take another question of this exercise. Question number 5. Check whether 6 raised to the power n can ends with digit 0 for any natural number n, 6 raised to 1, 6 raised to 2, like this. Now, for this we find the prime factors of 6. 6 raised to n, so prime factors of 6 are 2 and 3. So it becomes 2 into 3 raised to the power n. This means 2 raised to the power n into 3 raised to the power n. Question is whether expansion of this ends with 0. Any number ends with 0, its one prime factor must be 5 and 2. Very clear. To get 10 or 0 at units place or last digit, its one prime factor must be 2 and 5. Here, in the expansion of 6 raised to n, 2 is a factor, but 5 is not. Any power of 3 never ends with, never have a factor 5. So clearly, 5 is not, is not a factor in the expansion of of 6 raised to n. So therefore, the expansion of 6 raised to n never ends with 0. So very clear, the main part of this is any number with ends with 0, its prime factors must be 2 and 5 at least 1. But in this expansion, 2 is there, but 5 is not there. That's why it not ends with 0. Okay? So we come to go to the next question. Now, here in the next question, question number 6, we have to uh, clarify about the composite number. What are the composite numbers? Composite numbers are those numbers which can be expressed in the product of primes or product of two or more different numbers. So here, what is the method to simplify this? We, simp we solve these numbers. The expression which is given 7 into 11 into 13 plus 13. So here clearly in first and second part, 13 is common, so we have 7 into 11 plus 1. 7 into 11, that is 77 
plus 1 that is 13 into 78. Clearly, this expression is a product of two different integers, so that's why it is a composite. Similarly, we go for the second expression. So second is 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 plus 5. Clearly, in these two terms, 5 is common. So we take 5 as common. What left in the bracket? 7 into 6 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 plus 1. First we multiply these numbers. 7, 6 are 42 into 4, 3 are 12, 2 are 24 into 1, 24 plus 1. And we multiply 24 by 42, 24 to the 48, 4, then 24 for the 96 plus 4, 100 plus 1, that is 5 into 1009, or 5 into 1009. Clearly, the second expression also, product of two different integers. So, both expressions have to express in the form of product of two different integers or prime factors. So that's why the given expressions are since both the expressions can be expressed as a product of two different numbers or integers you can say so that's why the given expressions are composite number So, in the, uh, today we learn about the uh, what is fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Second, we simplify exercise 1.2 of different type of kind of questions. Remaining questions for your homework. In the next class, we will continue with irrational numbers, their proofs, and their decimal representation. Okay, thank you.